Recycling plastic is confusing and hard. We never know which bin to put it in. We have to separate out our compost. Do I have to rinse this off or not? We never know, and that's for good reason. There aren't consistent plastic recycling rules. And just because you put something in the recycling bin doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be recycled. For me, this problem is very personal. I grew up in Seattle, where my mom was extremely into conservation and sustainability efforts, to the extent that we even collected rain in a barrel to water our plants. To this day, she goes through painstaking uh, efforts to rinse and sort all of her different recyclables. So one day, after I'd been working on the plastics recycling problem for some time at IBM Research, I went home for Christmas, and she asked me, so are all of my efforts worth it? I hated to break her heart, but I had to tell the truth. Most of her recycling efforts had probably been wasted. In the US, less than 10% of our plastic waste is actually recycled. But I told her not to give up, to keep rinsing and sorting and recycling, that we would find technology to make plastics 100% recyclable. Today, there are still significant barriers to plastic recycling that are still worth working on. And those advances can't come soon enough, especially when it comes to recycling plastic. In 2019, we're in the middle of a plastic crisis. We have produced over 8.3 billion metric tons of plastic. That's enough to fill over 5,000 Roman Colosseums. Plastic is everywhere. It's in car parts, packages, uh, furniture, you name it. It's core to our global economy, and it's becoming an environmental disaster. Half of all manufactured package, uh, packages and plastics become trash in less than a year. And most of it winds up in the landfills. Eight million metric tons of plastic waste flow into the ocean every year, harming sea life and going up the food chain to us. By 2050, it's been projected that there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. This has led to a rising tide of public backlash, regulatory action, and plastic bans. But plastic is incredibly useful. It's lightweight, durable, and adaptable, and it's not just convenient and cost-effective. With plastic, we keep our food and beverages portable and safe, we save energy in transportation and buildings. It protects us from the elements, and it's critical in medicine. Many of us, like my mom, care a lot about recycling plastic waste. And many of us will continue to make the effort to recycle. But recycling in a recycle bin isn't a guarantee. Recycling is a function of geography and economics and current recycling practices are inefficient, expensive, require manual sorting and cleaning, and can't produce 100% recyclable materials. So this is a tough problem, and we've been working on it for years, and we've just announced a significant breakthrough. We've just announced a new way to make polyethylene terephthalate, or PET for short, the plastic, it's also the plastic that's virtually used in all water bottles, 100% recyclable. Uh, PET is also known, it has a number one label stamped on the bottom of it. Uh, it's used in bottles, uh, food packaging, and polyester clothing. This new PET recycling process is called Full Cat. Full Cat is a new way to recycle PET even when it's mixed with other types of materials in a machine that looks a lot like an industrial strength Instapot. Let me give you an example. So pretending this is our industrial strength Instapot reactor, we could then take plastic water bottles, which have different components to it. This part is made out of the pet plastic. The top is a different type of material entirely. So we can put that in the mix. Maybe we 
didn't want to eat our strawberries. Those go in as well. Other types of plastics and materials and mixed waste can go in there as well. In the VOLCAT process, what we do, VOLCAT stands for Volatile Catalyst. We can put the Volatile Catalyst in the pot, which is essentially the magic sauce, close it, seal it, heat it up, the catalyst will work its magic, and break only the PET plastic back down to its starting material, which we call a monomer. That monomer is the exact same starting material that you use every time you ma manufacture PET for the very first time. So as a result, we collect the powder, which kind of looks a lot like sugar. Um, it's also the main ingredient in PET. And we can remake the same material, reform it into another plastic water bottle, or maybe make a reusable version of it, or we can make something totally different, like polyester cloth from it. Anything else that's in there that's not PET, uh, dirt, metals, glass, anything like that, can be uh, filtered out, and so you don't need to actually purify. In the next five years, breakthroughs like Volcat will bring new life to plastic trash and create a true plastic circular economy. And we've already been talking to some of you about licensing this technology. Municipal waste facilities and ocean cleanup crews will be able to ship unsorted, unclean plastic trash to plastic manufacturers and recycling plants for reuse. You'll start seeing labels on packages that say made from 100% recyclable materials. Bottles, bags, even clothes and car parts will be made out of recycled plastic and continuously recycled. Once plastic recycling is scalable and sustainable, we can harvest the Great Pacific Garbage Patch and landfills will become gold mines. But it's not gonna happen overnight. Scientists, engineers, waste facilities, plastic producers, packaged consumer good companies, and of course, all of us need to come together to make this happen. Even if we stop producing plastic, this minute, we'd still have a huge mess to clean up. But with advances in science and technology and collaboration throughout the recycling supply chain, it can turn plastic into renewable resource in the next five years. Thank you.